Hello, people and bots. Grandpa Canuck here. And we are in Stationaires. Once again, for another tutorial. This tutorial is on uh, tracking the sun for your, for your solar panels. Oh, and there's Bonnie and Clyde, my two pet uh, uh, green cheek conyers. They love to get in on the conversation. Okay. So, this is an eight chip system. And as you can see, the sun's about to come up. Our solar panels are aligned for the, uh, the sunrise. What you need is two memory logic, two logic readers, two batch writers, and two math units. You need one for the horizontal direction and one for the vertical direction. Now, if you only wanted to track the uh, vertical direction, you could do it in four, and essentially half the system. Now, some things about the solar arrays. The solar arrays are bent. They don't face the exact horizon. Therefore, you're not going to get full amount of energy until they are 10, 15 degrees off of the horizon. Okay. Make sure you're using heavy cable on your panels on the power side. And for the data side, you only need light cable. Hey, look at that. Sunrise. There we go. As it comes over the horizon, you can see it increasing. But it's not 100%. It will not be 100% until it gets about 10 degrees up, 10 to 15 degrees up. Okay. <clears throat> now, this is all based on using one sensor for the sun. And as you can see, it's giving you a lot of data here. It's giving you a, a, a solar angle. The iterance the horizontal and the vertical, okay? Now the horizontal and the vertical are going, essentially giving you the, um, if you're using polar coordinates in math, the angle. In three dimensions towards the sun, okay? And you're gonna use that data. So you're going to read and label these. Please label these. You're going to label one of these vertical and one horizontal with everything. So it's split in two. So let's follow the vertical here. So you're going to logic read the sensor in the vertical sense. You need a constant. Now this is determined by the direction that your solar panels are facing. Mine are facing east. And if you had the power connector, think of the power connector as front. If you had the power connector facing west, north, or south, that constant would be different. Okay? So, in my case, it needs to be set to 90. Now, I have the data uh, memorized here. I have my constant. I have the angle towards the sun, horizontal and vertical. And so when I go to a math unit, and the math unit okay, is reading the vertical, or the vertical sensor and the constant. And it's going to, in this case, add them together and come up with a number. And then it's going to send that number to the batch writer, okay, which is reading it from the math. And it's going to output it to the solar panels, okay, and it's the vertical that I'm sending. So it'll affect the vertical of it, okay? Same with the horizontal. Read the data. Have your 
uh, constant depending on the direction of your facing of your solar panels. Okay, read the data, have the constant, do the math, right to your solar panels. Now, my solar panels are a little too close together in this case. So you can see, whoa, whoopsie, you can see I'm slightly blocked. With the lead one here, as you can see, it's 99% on 1% out of alignment. Now, the sun never comes up directly in the east and sets in the west because you, you never get put down right on the equator of the planet that you're on. So that's why you need a horizontal and a vertical. Because there's a slight variance in, in where you're building your base on the planet as far as your latitude goes. Therefore, you will need a horizontal component as well as a vertical component. Now, this was put together for space. You can see once it gets to a certain point of the day, I do get the full uh, amount here. I've got 99%. I'm missing. There we go. Hit 100. 99 to 100%. My power, I have on the same line as all of my outside equipment here. And this line is going all the way back to my batteries, back here, along with all my other input. So when the day is over, over the night, the solar panels cannot reach down through the planet and they only have, remember, that 10 or 15 degrees angle towards the actual horizon. So in the last few minutes of daylight, you will get depleted amounts as the sun sets and the... Uh, the tracking will automatically reposition them for the morning. Okay, that's the eight chip system. You need four chips for horizontal, four chips for vertical. One solar panel, or sorry, solar uh, uh, sensor. And you can have as many of these solar panels as you want. They can be in any configuration, anywhere, as long as they're on the same data line. So they all have to be connected on the same data line. Remember, all your chips need to have connections on all the appropriate sides. Some chips are four-sided, like the math unit. Some are three-sided, like the readers and writers. And some are two-sided, like the memories. So make sure the proper chip can reach the unit it is talking to. Okay, so the solar sensor has to be connected to the data side of your logic readers. Your logic readers and your memory all have to have power, but their data side has to be connected to the input 1 and input 2 of the math unit. So the math unit needs an input 1, input 2, power, and an output. And its output has to go to the batch writers. And the batch writers, of course, have to have an input, an output, and a power. Okay. Input, of course, has to be connected to the appropriate uh, math unit. The output has to be connected to the solar panels that they are working. Okay. So that's the logic. It's a straightforward kind of linear thinking, but quite often your cabling does not end up like that. You can try and lay these out in a straight order. Uh, I just find it uses less space to put it like this, 
And there's probably one or two cables that I don't need here. Well, maybe not. Not too many that I don't need here. I, yeah, yeah, I could do it a little differently with the cables, but cable's pretty cheap. Okay, so once again, read the data from the solar sensor. Have a constant. The constant's going to depend on the direction that your solar panels are laid out whether the power source is towards the north, south, east, or west. In my case, it's east, and my constant is 90. Compare the data, uh, use a mathematical uh, unit function, and in this case, I'm adding the two together, my constant and my reading, and that gives me an output, which goes to the batch writer, and that sends to all of my solar units. That's it. Pretty straightforward. A lot of people fear this as a complex operation. It's probably the second thing uh, you uh, want to set up, or the first thing you want to set up that uses the logic chips. Uh, it's quite easy to set a temperature control first. It uses less chips. Uh, this is using, you know, four chips in two directions. So that's it. All you people in bots out there, take care. Have a good one. And be good to one another. We'll see you next time. And any questions you have, please leave them. And I'll get back to you. Take care.